Friends, welcome to worship at Christ Covenant Church in Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Pastor Kathy and I and the rest of the team welcome you to worship uh, today on this second Sunday of Advent. We continue in our I Believe Even When series today, and December 6th being the first Sunday of the month, we will celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion today. And so if you need to go gather communion elements, we encourage you to stop the recording right now and go do that. Perhaps you have an eagle eye and notice that I'm wearing a Santa Claus tie today. That's uh, because I'm really honoring St. Nicholas. Today, December 6th, is St. Nicholas Day, and that's a wonderful story. Look it up if you would like to do that. Now we continue in worship with Coventry Carol, a duet by Carla and Zach Metz. In both the Gospel of Matthew and Isaiah, a messenger appears as a sign from God, heralding a new era. In each passage, the words, do not be afraid, appear, offering a clue that the messenger, whether prophet or angel, was referencing something that induced fear in the recipient, a new way of being together, of relating and loving, takes courage eschewing the present order of things so that a new and better way can be born. The wounds inflicted. The fear of the other. The fear of the other. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of daring love, even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle 
even when we cannot yet see a better day, when we will act like the human family we are, ignite the flame of love within us, that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Amen. As we light our sanctuary Advent candle of love, you are invited to light your candle at home. And now we're going to share the sign of peace with each other. Do you remember how we showed everyone this last week? Let's, no. Okay, well, let's re remind ourselves. The sign for peace in sign language is actually made up of two signs. The first one is you put your palms together and you twist them for do, to become, and then you spread them out, and that means calm. So together, to become calm is the sign for peace. And the sign for with is you put your fists together, with. And what's the sign for you? You can point to people, yep, you, 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 or you can go like this, you, all of you. So let's put it all together. Ready? Let's do it together. Peace be with you. you. And next, we're going to have Meredith and Ella sharing uh, a little bit more of our children's time song, This Little Light of Mine. Ready? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm gonna take this light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Take this light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Gonna take this light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This in a light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This in a light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This in a light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank you for helping us pass the peace, Heidi and Evie, and also to Meredith and Ella for this little light of mine. Would you join me now in prayer? God, we are thankful to be able to be uh, gathered in worship uh, right now. Some perhaps have watched this service on Saturday night, or some perhaps have watched it uh, early Sunday morning, and some perhaps are going to watch it later today or during the week. We're thankful that because of technology, we are able to uh, gather in worship in this way that we are. God, there are a lot of things that we pray for. Uh, we always pray for health issues and health conditions. There are people that have been uh, going through tests and procedures this week. We think of uh, these people. We think of uh, Donna Hodson's parents, and we're thankful. Uh, well, her mother was hospitalized this week, Sarah Seep. We pray for her and her for her dad as well, Donald. We pray for Jody Scribner's parents, Jay and Janine, in the Detroit, Michigan area. We have a request to pray for a teacher named Jill in the area. We continue to pray for Joan Whitney, who's having uh, some issues, including uh, laryngitis, vocal cord issues. God, we pray for Joan. And we pray as well. We've had a specific prayer this week uh, to pray for people that are struggling with COVID fatigue. We all know what that is. But God, we are hearing increasing issues of uh, of stress and mental health issues. Uh, we pray for those who are struggling with uh, this COVID fatigue and other mental and emotional concerns and issues. God, I thank you. We thank you for uh, people that around here, around our church that have been doing such uh, wonderful things, so many of them behind the scenes. 
for the guys that blew leaves this week, for the people who have decorated our church, for everyone who is working on our drive through nativity. God, we give you thanks for these. We give you thanks for the other ministries that people are uh, taking part in, delivering food, the ministry of encouragement through prayer and phone calls and emails. Thank you, God, for that ministry. And it's not just a ministry only focused on members of our church. We know that people are reaching out and encouraging others where they live and where they work, uh, neighbors, all kinds of things. Thank you. Thank you for that. We pray for a number of things as well. Uh, we know that uh, people live and people die. You know, Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything. And we've been asked to pray for uh, Cindy and Gary Nyland. Uh, Cindy's brother, Larry Kirkwood, passed away this week. And God, uh, COVID, uh, that's uh, the issue that is before us so often and so clearly. We pray for people that have COVID. Uh, we've been asked to pray for these people. Eileen and David Burks. Uh, Leslie and Roland Scholl's granddaughter Morgan, and also for Leslie, for Tom and Chris Blackwell, and Melissa Landers, for another teacher in the area, and for, for others in our church family and beyond. God, we pray for uh, all of these people, and we pray for the, the four families in our church uh, that, that uh, have COVID in their families. None of them are connected to each other, and, but we do pray for each and every one of them. God, as always, we lift up our leaders, uh, not just our leaders here in church, you know, our leadership team and, and uh, other leaders in church, but leaders in our nation. We pray for uh, Donald Trump and for Joe Biden, for Nancy Pelosi, uh, for Mitch McConnell, for Tom Wolf. We pray for wisdom for each one of them. Thank you, God, for the ability to pray, for the freedom to pray. And now we uh, exercise that freedom, though silently, we exercise that freedom right now in a time of silence, offering you praises and offering you uh, petitions that we are asking for. We ask them for them in boldness, God. God, we know that you hear our prayers. We know that sometimes you answer yes, and sometimes you answer no, and sometimes the answer is not right now. And so we're thankful that we know you have heard our prayers. And now we know that you will hear this prayer, the prayer that unites us, the prayer that Jesus taught us. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Matthew 1, 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. 
But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations and thoughts on each of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this passage from Matthew is so familiar that we, it would be easy to forget how unusual it would have been for those who first heard it whether through oral tradition or for those who may have first read it even. How easy it could have been to dismiss it, the scandal of an unmarried young girl who became pregnant. How? By the Holy Spirit? That was the story, right? Her fiancé, Joseph, also young, a good man, considering a quiet breakup with as little embarrassment as possible because he was a good man or kid, but a sign from God via an angel, a messenger of God, changed the mind and heart of Joseph and thus changed the course of humanity. Do not be afraid, the angel told Joseph. Do not be afraid. Easier said than done. Now, if you are a fan of the series Veggie Tales, which some of you may be, It's perhaps easier to not be afraid if the angels of the Lord are the peas, as in the vegetable peas. And if you do not know the series Veggie Tales, please look them up and start watching them because they're very fun. So if those were the angels that appeared to Joseph, it'd be a lot easier to laugh and to find them comical than to be afraid. But if a messenger from God appears and says, do not be afraid, of course, you're going to wonder why you shouldn't be afraid. Because when someone says, don't be afraid, the first thought is, well, I should be afraid. Something something is going to be causing me fear, right? Do not be afraid, easier said than done. And I can imagine an exchange, Joseph thinking or saying, do you know my genealogy? I come from good people. I am good people. What will this do to all of us? My reputation is gone, and Mary, I love her. This will ruin us both. And I can almost imagine the angel telling Joseph, deep breaths in, out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in the breath of God, now breathe out, count to 10. Do not be afraid. God is present. God is with you. God will go with you. And little did Joseph know what was to come, both the heartaches and the joys. And yet, imagine what Joseph and Mary and those first followers, disciples, the early church, the early Christians, we might have missed out on if Joseph had said, no thanks, I think I'll play it safe and stick with my current method of doing things. Joseph's courageous love was a step towards a new era for each of us. Today's second Sunday of Advent in our series is about love. I believe in love, daring right relationships. I believe in love even when. As part of this Advent series, we are recommending documentaries that you can watch, documentaries that speak to the power of music in difficult times. And I know that a few of you watched last week's documentary, and we have not yet, although it's on our list to watch. This week's recommendation 
from our series is a 2009 production titled Girls on the Wall. Girls on the Wall. It is an, it's available on Amazon Prime for $1.99 if you have Amazon Prime. I have watched the trailer and I've also watched the behind the scenes video which is available on YouTube and hopefully this week I'll watch the film. I need to give you an advisory though. Um, the series creator, Dr. Marsha McPhee, does advise that the film does have very strong language. So we understand if you choose not to watch it for that reason. However, Dr. Marsha McPhee suggests that if we watch this documentary, we look at the language as an act of love itself, trying to listen for greater understanding, setting aside the foul language. Here's a description of the film. The teenage girls of Warrenville Prison, which is a prison in Illinois, the teenage girls of Warrenville Prison are not your average delinquents. Having graduated from juvie to prison, these are the kids most likely to remain in the correctional system their whole lives. They are also some of the sharpest and most irrepressible young women you'll meet. When the girls of this Heartland prison are given an unlikely shot at redemption, the chance to write and stage a musical based on their lives, they must relive their crimes, reclaim their humanity, and take a first step toward breaking free of the prison system. There are plenty of reviews on the documentary website about this documentary, including some that say that some of these girls who are so hardened by their own abuse and trauma of their childhoods and by the crimes they have committed, partly because of this abuse and trauma of their childhoods and their life in prison, some of these girls who are so hardened at first resist being part of this documentary or resist being on film or resist being part of a musical in prison but eventually, some of them start to warm up and tell their stories. And in doing so, they begin to heal and begin to love and to feel loved. Love, daring to love differently, even in prison. Love, daring to love radically, even when you could walk away, as Joseph, the father of Jesus, the earthly father of Jesus could have, having the courage to take those radical steps. Whether we are behind bars or facing a scandalous pregnancy, navigating COVID, arguing with loved ones, wondering where our next meal or companionship is coming from, or fill in the blank, whatever we are experiencing and facing and navigating we are each in need of, wanting, craving, hoping for, love to believe in. The theme song for our series is I Believe, which fits, right? I Believe Even When is our series. Meredith sang that song earlier and sang it last week as well. And the song is based on an anonymous scrawling that was found on the wall in a cellar where it's believed that Jews hid out during the Holocaust. The words are, I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. I believe in love even when I do not feel it. I believe in God even when he is silent. It takes courage to change our patterns of love, or any patterns and habits for that matter, especially patterns of fear in prison, in a scandalous pregnancy way back when Joseph and Mary were alive. And there is much fear, much to fear in life today, yesterday. We don't need to list it all, right? There is much to fear. So what do we do? Well, we have options. We could live as people of fear, making daily decisions based on fear, fear of others, fear of the future, fear of uncertainty, and we need to have some healthy fear. I'm not advocating rash decisions. I'm not advocating 
stupidity. I'm not advocating doing things that are really unhealthy and, and unnecessary. We need to have some healthy fear. But as Christians, we can also live out a love that Christ the Messiah showed to each one of us modeled on the cross. Christ the baby whose first arrival on earth we wait to celebrate this Advent season. Christ whose earthly mother and father were stuck in a scandalous situation and yet lived out their love, partially because Joseph's radical love was changed, changed his direction because of a messenger from God via an angel in a dream. I believe in the power of love, even when it might be easier to quietly walk away. I believe in the power of love and music, even when you are a youth imprisoned and many might not believe in you. I believe in the power of love, even when we are in a pandemic and we are isolated and we aren't sure which direction to turn and we're frustrated and we have COVID fatigue and we are really sick and tired of us and we are really sick, a lot of us. And I believe in the power of love from God whose love has the power to transform us and our world through us and our world. Amen. Each week we're also introducing a Christmas carol, introducing is the wrong term, really, because we know these Christmas carols, but we are introducing a little bit of a backstory of a Christmas carol. This week, the Christmas carol that you will be singing, that we will be singing, and you can follow along to, is It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. This Christmas carol was written in 1849 by a Massachusetts minister named Reverend Edmund Hamilton Sears. But there's one verse that has been left out of the hymnals over the many decades since then, including ours, so we're not going to sing it, but I will read that verse here. And it refers to the love song of the angels being drowned out by our warring nature as humans. So I'll be reading that verse right now. Yet with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel strain have rolled 2,000 years of wrong. And we at war on earth hear not the love song which they bring. Oh, hush the noise and cease the strife and hear the angels sing. So though we will not be singing that verse, let us be reminded that we are to listen to the angel chorus and then join it, raising our voices with the message that love and not hate is the answer. Please join in singing, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear.
Friends, it's always an honor to gather at the table, and so we do that as well. We remember the radical love that Kathy, that Pastor Kathy spoke about during her sermon, and it is radical love uh, of Jesus that invites us to this table today. Advent 2020 is a little different, of course, and our communion liturgy for today is a little different as well. So would you join me in prayer? God, we are uh, thrilled to be here, to be celebrating this radical love that you have for us, that you offered your body, you offered your life uh, for us, that we might have eternal life. And so God, as we move to communion, we ask you to bless the bread. We ask you to bless the cup. We ask you to bless each one of us, to bless our church, and to bless your world. We give thanks for this day and this time, in Jesus' name, amen. Here is bread. Good news for the world, with a headline that says, let all who are hungry for justice come and eat. And here is wine, good news for all who long, with a headline that says, let all who thirst for righteousness come and drink. Here is the table, good news for all who are lost, with a headline that says, all who are weary, come and gather here. And here is community, good news, for all who the world ignores, with a headline that says, Behold, I make all things new. Come and be renewed. And friends, here is Jesus. Good news for all who wait, with a headline that says, I have come that all may have life. Come and live life fully. Take and eat and celebrate our Lord, our faith, our community, and our mission. Please celebrate the Lord's Supper now. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for this meal that we have shared, offered to us because of the radical love we see in the Godhead, the radical love of God to create the world, the radical love of Jesus to offer his life for each of us, the radical love of the Holy Spirit who empowers us and encourages us to live life and to live out this radical love we see. We thank you for this meal that we have shared, and we pray that we will ref reflect this same radical love in our lives, not just today, but in the days to come. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, as we go out this week, or as we stay home this week, we wait for justice.
but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that God is with us, Emmanuel, and continue to fill the night left by sadness with messages of love, Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that love alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me at home. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen. Inspiring and good words for us today on this second Sunday of Advent. As always, I have some announcements for us uh, before the prelude, and we uh, would encourage you to, as always, read your insights that is delivered to you to your inbox each Thursday. There's all kinds of good information there, including information about how we can be compassion deliverers. We talked about that in our Compassion Camp series. But there's information in there about Operation Christmas Child. We've reached our goal and we've extended our goal. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, we are partnering with the Salvation Army in Pottstown for our angel tree. There's information uh, in the insights about that. So let's finish strong on that as well. Uh, in the insights as well are some more of our uh, reports uh, that are follow-up for, uh, for our annual meeting that was held in November. Also in the insights is information about how you can partake in uh, beautifying our sanctuary by uh, ordering poinsettias. Uh, yes. Friends, next Sunday, December 13th, there's an exciting opportunity. It's, as I said earlier in the week, hey, it's 2020, what are we gonna do? We have a drive-through nativity planned for next Sunday, December 13th, from five o'clock to seven o'clock. Put that on your calendar, uh, read the insights, invite friends and neighbors to drive through as well. It's gonna be really great. Uh, there's gonna be music, lights, a live nativity. Uh, we're gonna be using our FM transmitter to, to broadcast uh, uh, Christmas carols and Christmas music, and so we are really looking forward to that. And uh, please uh, join that as well. Another way that you could be a day brightener for someone in the insights, there's a list of people that uh, outreach opportunities that could use maybe a, a phone call or a Christmas card. So think about that also. A couple other notes. Confirmation this afternoon at uh, four o'clock. And also we're having our youth group uh, Christmas party via Zoom on Wednesday at six o'clock. Really looking forward to that. Finally, uh, it's December, and so we want to say, Pastor Kathy and I, our leadership team, we want to say thank you for your continued support in these up and down times, for your encouragement, for your prayer support, and for your financial support. Remember that you can always support the church financially by mailing in your tithes and offerings uh, with U.S. Postal Service. Uh, in person, when we gather in person, uh, you can do it by going to christ-covenant.org, our website. And then, of course, you could also uh, make an offering via the Give Plus app. We thank you for your generosity, and we pray a blessing on you this day and in the days to come.